Hello everyone, and uh, welcome back to match three of Valpo Shield versus Bradley Bla Braves. Um, going into this match, Valpo Shield is one and one. Bradley Braves, this is their NECC match two, so they're actually only zero and one right now with their schedule being a little bit mixed up. But um, you know, no harm, no foul. Um, going into this game, I mean, Valpo Shield kind of taking a loss with their last fight against uh, the um, Pioneers, right? So, going into this match, I mean, we've seen the Genji, we've seen the Sombra come out, we've seen Sojourn in every single match, but, um, I mean, are there any... Yeah, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I haven't even introduced my new, like, co-host here. I'm, I'm in the mind of the last game yet, because we switched teams, I'm so sorry. Uh, my name's Daikembe, I'm here with my co-host. Era, also known as Aubrey. I'm so sorry about that, folks. It's um, fine. Literally, like, we've had a last-minute schedule change where we were going to cast the other game, I changed my intro, after the intro changed, I completely cut out my co-host. Uh, that's my fault. <laughs> But uh, we're here now, <laughs> at least. We're here on Lijiang Tower for Valpo Shields Match 3. Um, with a couple of the picks here, I mean, you see, right, you've talked about yeah, it. Yeah, Zarya already. Exactly. The Zarya is so strong right now. But really, um, I mean, looking at Bradley's side, too, we have the Reinhardt pulled out, too. Yeah, that is interesting. Cool. I've seen a fair amount of Reinhardt, but I've also seen wow. a lot of Zarya, wow. obviously, because Zarya has been the very top. Yep. Same thing with Kiriko and Lysio, a lot of them, so definitely a good mix. I think with this kind of uh, Reinhardt into Zarya take, it's kind of stopping that D.Va counter pick that you can have. Uh, a yeah. little bit of a deflect on the fire charge there and dash him in, but um, by stopping that D.Va pick, especially how strong D.Va is on the Lijiang Tower, um, it's kind of clutch, and especially with Valpo Esports coming in strong with the three kills pushing in. I mean, you see Fan Beauty is not afraid to dive in there with that Genji. Really seeing that strength there. Lucio getting two of the kills there as well. I mean, having a little bit of yeah. fun. Yeah, I'm definitely in, um, definitely good to get the Lucio out of the way because, especially when I've been playing lately, Lucio has been kind of annoying to deal with. I think he got some buffs or something in certain areas. Definitely good. I do see them pulling out the D.Va though, yep. and D.Va is not particularly good against Zarya, at least in my experience playing D.Va. Not that good. And I think really what they're looking for, and there's the pick on the Zarya yes. again, that burst damage, that's huge. I think they are just focusing on burst damage. They're huge sleep from Ana being able to sit on that Genji. Genji getting the kill in Symmetra, but being able to trade two for one. Uh, Bradley's pushing on to this point now. Uh, being able to move it, Lucio being forced to back, Hanzo getting hit out by the grenade as well. Um, I think, I mean, what we saw right there, the reason that they did chose, cheese that D.Va is they switched their DPS a little bit to yeah. that Reaper, to that Symmetra, that very heavy burst, push, and pull kind of fight. Um, and I think the Zarya is still a really great pick, like you said, going into this D.Va, but we're going to have to see how Valpo Esports' backline uh, supports them. Yeah, definitely. I think they might need to, um, I keep seeing um, a lot of heavy damage being taken on the Zarya. Um, we just got an ult, I think that was just from their Lucio, actually. I can't tell. Uh, so we had an ult from Bubble Esports' Lucio and from Hanzo coming in here. But the nice. blade also from Fampu, that's dropping three ults. But that was huge because was there's good. a team kill going on. Um, yeah. I mean, we saw the combo right there. Obviously, we got the, we got the DPS brother buff right now going on with the Hanzo and the Genji. But that kind of combo right there, blow, although it blew three ults, you still do have the Zarya up and up. Oh, never mind. It looks like we're gonna have the Kiriko ult pop up right here as well, trying to just back him up a little bit. And two kills going off with the knockoff of the map uh, from Lucio. Yeah, a little bit definitely. of a, a bump going on. It's kind of funny. Obviously, Lucio. Definitely, at least in my experience, has tried to get a lot of those knockoffs. I feel like they've really fished for them. <laughs> I think that's like one of the fun parts it's, about playing Lucio. I mean, even, I mean, like you said, even in a competitive setting, I mean, he's still having fun. And it looks like the Symmetra pick's gonna peek off a little bit here. The ult coming from Reaper, but instantly killed. That's gonna waste all his, like, ult right there. The ult coming out from Zarya as well, and this is gonna be another team wipe. I mean, yeah. Right now, Bradley is just getting, uh, just getting cornered almost. I mean, we saw that the Symmetra had a good idea with getting that teleporter, trying to jump past that checkpoint. Um, Reaper trying to get back on here with 98%, almost done. Um, but getting headshot by this Hanzo to secure that objective. I mean, we saw it with that Bradley uh, attack right there. 
it was a good idea with the Symmetra trying to get that turret, but I don't think they communicated that all too well because half went through one, half went through the other, and that allowed Falpo to kind of just pick off. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you're going to flank, you either need to do like one and have them surprise them from the back while have like the main area. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you can't really split off that well because then it just allows you to be completely like, like cornered when, during the fight. I agree with you. There's there's a difference between harassing the back line and splitting your team, mm -hmm. right? And splitting that strength, especially with now only five people, is so dangerous, especially going into these fights. But I mean, as going into map two on Lijiang Tower, we see Symmetra teleport and then the quick swatch back, just quick swap back to Genji. I mean, we've seen FemPewdie do this a hundred times now almost. Um, no, we do see. But the instant kill from the soldier, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's just like we just see Sojourn and Cassidy coming in, switching yeah. off their DPS, probably trying to get a better idea. Same thing with the Winston, trying a different thing. Bradley is definitely switching up their comp right now, trying to get these kills. Um, a couple of even picks right now coming in, but yeah. this uh, Sojourn early shot on that Hanzo stopped a lot of their health. But wow, that was Franco is just fragging out right now as Genji. He, he's alive this game. Yeah, definitely. He, 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 is, well. he is having a good match going for any chance he gets, really. Mm -hmm. Definitely understand. That. He is doing well right now, and I mean, we're going to see right now Wistful's uh, positioning as Zarya going right back up to that front choke point. That is the one thing that's weird about Lee Jung Tower. I mean, unless you're going to go from the right and take the super, super long route like Sojourn is right there, you really only have one choke point to go through, and that gives defense a lot of time just to sit there. Um, we'll see Kiriko being clutched there, hitting the E and stopping Fampute from getting a pick there, actually singling him out and killing him. Yeah. Zarya taking a lot of damage as well with the shield gone. Um, Hanzo switching up a little bit. And there's the Kiriko ult, uh, but it's not enough because Cassidy is going to pick Hanzo back out. We'll yeah. see if Lucio can get out of this a little bit of cheeky I wall running, but don't I don't think so. Don't. And there he goes. <laughs> I mean, hey, go go out with pride, right? Go yeah. out on your own terms. Uh, 90 charts on the Zarya, but he has to be careful there, because with no team, I mean, the burst damage is really strong right now from Bradley. We do have a few alts that we are going to see soon, especially from Genji and Zarya, so... Yeah. Oh, and Ana's alt, so... Probably best play right now would probably be to, yeah, once everyone's together, put Ana's alt on Zarya. Yep. And there's there's a high noon coming out from Cassidy on the other side. I it probably did. was a misclick, yeah. I would think, honestly. Uh, this Winston, Winston is an issue, but the Lucio ult comes out to save a couple of people there. And there goes the ult here as well. The yes. dash and the nano blade, and this is oh, going to be huge. Yes. They just blew four ults and wiped wow. the team. Uh, Amazing job. Just the Kiriko blasting on. Probably ended up... Um, Probably ended up using her, like, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but like the preventative buff. Yeah, like preventative. her E. Yeah, yep. that. The, li that. the little chime bomb that she has, yep. Mm -hmm. That so, up herself to survive. Yeah, she, just, she can use that, but I mean, with all your teammates dead, there's nobody to jump to at that point. I, I want to talk about it a little bit too, kind of the idea behind Bradley's draft here, because I see what they're going for. Um, yeah. With the stick and with the Sojourn hit, um, Really, the one way to counter that Zarya is to burst. Um, yep. You can't have sustained damage. And there goes the Kiriko ult coming out from Bradley uh, with the Winston ult as well, zoning him off. But, I mean, Zarya is a little bit fed right now. Uh, two kills going to Bradley's side uh, with the pick on the Ana and the pick on the Genji. The kill yeah. on Zarya following up as well. And Draxnos just popping off with this Soldier, and especially in that fight. I mean, we saw last fight. Um, I mean, Valpo's gonna pop four ults, Bradley's gonna come right back and pop more. <laughs> so, especially with this ult economy that's going on right now, really what we're looking for is Fam Pewdie, Wistful, and Dirty Wolf having their ults back up, hopefully by this next fight before this hits 90. Yeah, you know? the Winston is definitely being a thorn. I don't think they expected Winston. Yep. Because they seem to be definitely struggling with Winston. And that's that's two big kills on both DPSs for Valpo, especially going into 98 seconds on point is actually Zarya. huge. Huge ult by Zarya, but the bubble from Winston stops the grenade damage that's happening. She just gets pushed back out. There's a final high noon to just finish off the map. Yeah. Round two going to um, Bradley. 
I mean, we saw right there, there was a couple of good ults, but I feel like Valpo could play that a little bit better just by conserving maybe one or two ults. Um, I mean, that's just recognizing how dangerous Nanoblade is on its own. Because um, you can you can Nanoblade and then you can save Zarya and Hanzo ult for the next fight. So that's still a game-winning combination. Yeah. So I, I think it's going to be all about ult economy here. Yeah, so we definitely see them switching up a little bit, uh, dropping off the Zarya because, you know, they counterpicked with Winston. Definitely feel like Winston is probably more of a counterpick, actually, now that I realize. Yep. So, definitely moving over to Reinhardt will definitely be good. And we're seeing the, uh, Valp or we're seeing Bradley come out with the Sombra as well, which makes sense. Sombra is very, very strong right now in this meta, as we talked about with that increased damage to her. Yeah. But also, uh, this map three on Legion Tower, uh, lots of health points, lots of health packs to be able to jump back to, lots of leeway to kind of run around, get behind teams. And we're seeing right now, like you talked about, that Reinhardt counter pick to this Winston yes. is really working out because he is slapping. But oh. too bad, um, Valpo just wasn't there. They were not behind. Um, MPD now working on this Sojin a little bit, trying to get a couple of kills here. But the healing and the bounce back on Lucio is going to make that a little bit harder, sitting on 15 health here. We did um, knock out the Lucio, which definitely seems to be helping them a lot. Unfortunately, we did lose one of our damages as well. I mean, we're seeing here, I mean, Valpo's just going to have to regroup. Exactly what we were talking about when they won the first match, how Bradley split up too much, is what's happening to Valpo right now. I mean, they are way too just spread thin, especially in these fights. Yeah. It looks like they're setting up for a little bit of a leg push here. Uh, Reinhardt going on, doing what he does best, slapping around. Um, and there's the Kiriko ult coming out from Bradley. Uh, the kill on Winston though, that is their tank down. That's huge for Valpo Esports. Earth Shatter now coming out and a huge Earth Shatter getting about two, knocking away one. Um, Somber being able to hack Reinhardt, forcing him to back off a little bit. But another hack going out as well, the interrupt. But it looks like Reinhardt's getting enough consistent healing to be able to sit through that. Yeah. Lucio ulting for Valpo's side. And then a counter ult from Lucio again. Being able to push in. Uh, Reinhardt keeps swinging. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going. Oh, finally goes out that Sombra being able to outlive. But um, looks like Dirty Wolf on that soldier. Getting a couple of picks, doing well, but just not enough. We do, have, stagger. we do have Ana's nan nano boost, so depending on how they play this, this might be good to throw onto Reinhardt so they can throw him in, save Sojourn's ult for later. I don't know exactly what it does, personally. So, with uh, Sojourn's ult, and for the viewers out there that may not be so familiar, um, Sojourn's ult increases the charge on her alternate fire by a ton so that yeah. you can constantly alternate fire at 100%. And it looks like oh, exactly wow, what yeah. you said. There's that nano on that Ryan being able to push up in the double kill. And there's a triple kill as well. Yeah. Being able to clear point just in the nick of time as well with 97% on Bradley. I feel like um, Valpo, if they play this just right, they should be able to actually have this be a really close game no matter what. Yep. I mean, this is the deciding factor for this game here. This point right here. I, I want to see, especially like with Bradley, I mean, we've seen them when they were cornered before. They're really great playing in the lead, but when they are cornered, they start to kind of fall off a little bit. So I'm interested to see if they are going to group up here. Because if, if, if I'm them, I see that Sombra that we have on our team, and I split push her, right? The rest of the team can stick together. They can stay within Winston. But if you can split push that Sombra, it's just enough pressure to be able to back Valpo Esports off that point. Yeah. We're gonna have to see here, and it looks like Sombra got caught out a little bit, being forced to reset. As much yeah. as it seems frustrating that you're not getting the kill on Sombra, or she dashes away, you have to understand, the more that she dashes back, the longer time it has for her to join that fight. Yeah, the exactly. more that you can reset her, reset her, reset her without her impact happening, mm -hmm. the better your team does, because then it turns a 5v5 to a 4v5. And it looks like we have a dash coming in from the other and side, ult from Sorgen as well, and the ult from the uh, Bradley team's Kiriko. A couple of shots going down, but you see that constant charge is just nasty for damage. Uh, Dirty Wolf yep. landing a couple of headshots here. You know, back in, Lucio on Bradley's team, you know, on the right, knockout, right. the charge on Winston, but not being able to get him away. Yeah, Winston used that ult to save himself, but we do have a, we did have, um, a, uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of his name, 
junk rats <laughs> alt. Yep. So hopefully they can send it in quickly before they cap the point. Um, uh, mainly use. Oh. And there it goes. Um, that just like that last cap. That fight was so important for um, just like Valpo Esports in general holding that point because he saw Bradley just got up. They co they coordinated. And they went to play. I mean. As you see here with the play of the game, Wishful yeah. Zarya has always been very solid, especially with the Zarya pick that we have here. Yeah, yeah that um, that choice for Zarya in the first round was definitely really good, but I feel like they also like got the them to really counter pick early, which definitely did not help as much too. Yeah. I Could... think. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> okay. It looks like. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, and honestly, with the Zarya pick, right, you saw that they did get countered, especially in those second two uh, mm -hmm. runs, but I think Valpo didn't really expect a pick back, right? Yeah. They were kind of expecting, hey, like, this is a good meta pick, this is what we want, this is what we're comfortable with, like, we're going to ride it through, and I think that kind of ended up costing them a little bit, especially in those last two matches. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you were not ex like, obviously, I don't. I think they were expecting a Zarya, so they went in with like a little something. I don't remember exactly what they started out with, mm -hmm. but they started out with something like pretty decent. And then they saw the Zarya, and they're like, "Okay, we got a counter pick." And then they did that, and then Valpo actually reacted a little late yep. to the counter pick. Mm -hmm. So because I, I I agree with you because with that first round that they came out with Zarya, they did have the nice pick going out, especially against that D.Va that they ran in the first round. Mm -hmm. But then going into the second and third rounds, um, they answered back with that Winston being able to dive, especially being a counter to their damage, who was doing really great. I mean, we saw Fampudi's Genji got shut down by that second match because yeah. of that Winston pick, because of that McCree stick, or mm -hmm. that uh, Cassidy stick, I'm sorry. Yeah. But um, because of that stick, it was really hard for him to play that game. And because Valpo was slow on that, um, it was really, really hard to just get back into it. I mean, we saw match three, they did end up changing their picks and they were mm -hmm. able to win a couple of those fights, but it was just too late by then. Yeah. Um, and I think, looks like it's not going to be Perry. So, um, hmm. going to be a Route 66 game, which is, I mean, it's interesting. Um, going into an escort map, right, mm -hmm. obviously... Defense is very strong on Route 66's first point, but their second and third point are very attack heavy. It's a very steamroll. Oh. And there's, it's back to Prairie, so... Okay, we were planned um, for Prairie, so... Yeah. Right? So, sorry about the, like, sudden confusion here. But, um, looks like we will be going into this hybrid map. Mm -hmm. Um, with my own personal experience, I think right now this pick... I mean, we haven't seen it all match, but mm -hmm. I think the Orisa will go really well in this map. Um, yeah. I don't know what you're thinking right mm -hmm. but with the corridors that Pariso has where she can javelin she can stun i mean there are other characters too like uh, who who comes to mind when you think like stuns on walls and knocking people um, back well obviously reinhardt mm -hmm. um for one because you know he immediately has that one no, signature move where he can push you into a wall and stun you yep but um Thinking about like Orisa, Orisa, um, definitely a good option too, just because she's got those lances that are actually new to her kit. Yep. And same thing with a lot of her other things that she can do. Same thing with her uh, ultimate too. She's got a few areas where that would probably be very good choices too. Her ultimate leaves a lot for skill expression, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to comboing with your team. And I think it's important for this first map because Pariso is hybrid, right? So it's going to be a control point first. Um, but walking in, it's a very wide opening. Yes. So you need someone that's going to be able to tank through, that's going to be able to walk through. It looks like Valpo's going to elect to get this D.Va here, which is actually a really good pick still. I mean, it's along the same lines as Orisa, where you need someone that's going to be able to walk through, going to be able to displace, right, and be able to get people out of position. And that's what D.Va does best. So yeah. along the same lines, not the same character we were expecting, mm -hmm. but definitely the same thought process. We also are seeing the Lucio one, being changed out meditation. for Zenyatta, which I can definitely understand. Is there's not really a lot of places where uh, where Lucio can really do his thing. There's not like a lot of things. So switching to Zenyatta, also a pretty good option. Same thing with the Ana. Yep. Wow. And I think it's, it's especially important. They are gonna try and combo that uh, Zenyatta with that um, 
Hanzo, as we've seen earlier. I mean, that increased damage allows him to, like, quarter shot instead of just half damage. And that's more than enough for his team to kill. I mean, we're seeing right here, right now, this D.Va is able to back people off. Um, the only issue that she's really going to face here is that um, Sombra, that hack, uh, which I think Bradley was expecting that D.Va to come out for this point. And looks like a couple of kills as well going to Bradley's side with Drax now picking up more soldier kills. Um, he's been popping off, honestly, these last couple of matches. Um, so I guess we are really seeing them be actually, I actually saw a little bit of surprise in their reaction score of the D.Va because, you know, they saw her and she immediately popped up, attacked them, definitely didn't notice that. Yep. I, I mean, you hit hard, hit fast. That's the idea behind a lot of these comps, and Winston that's how you... backing up. Sorry. Yep. No, yeah. With uh, the team, like, going on, especially with the Lucio and back, even if he needs to hop back on point, it think, looks like they're just gonna try and play to retake here. So, but... we do have a D.Va ult coming, and there's gonna be a... I feel like there's gonna be a few good chances for a D.Va ult right here, just to get them spread out a little bit. Not the best option in my mind, but definitely still good. She is going to lose her mech though, which does make her incredibly vulnerable. We do have the Zen ult coming out on point as well, uh, enough to pick that Sojourn that's been so crucial. The kill going on Hanzo getting dived by that um, Winston, and Winston popping off again against the Zen. I mean, we've seen this is a good pick for Valpo, but it seems like it, there's a common theme of every pick that Valpo has that they're comfortable with being countered by one tank in the game, and that's Winston. Yeah. Um, Winston is very strong right now in Overwatch 2 as well, like, don't get it twisted. But with the picks that they have, I mean, let's let's look at Valpo's team. They have Zenyatta, Ana, and Hanzo. Three characters that are easily distracted. And even D.Va, to an extent, not being able to use their defense matrix. I mean, yeah. These are, these are characters that are very, very strong in their own right, but if Bradley's tank plays this correctly, he's able to shut down a lot of their t combos that they have. Yeah, definitely, um, depending on exactly like how the tanks react to one another, you can definitely get different things. But we are going to combat with our own Winston mm -hmm. to take out um, the other Winston, which is definitely a good move. Might need to just do a diddle match, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, just start mirroring the characters. <laughs> we can we can run we can run Sojin as well. You see Fan Beauty on it right now. I mean, uh, all we need is that Hanzo for Sombra, and we will be good. But um, I mean, like like you said, we are running with the Winston now. Uh, he's super strong, especially going into this uh, Sombra matchup as well, because Sombra's hack now that it doesn't disable abilities as much more so it's an interrupt mm -hmm. with winston he's still able to dive he's still able to do what he needs to do and that damage he has such a getaway that that damage buff unless it was like on someone like roadhog or someone that has less movement it's yeah. less useful yeah so, exactly and we're gonna see hanzo push up a little bit trying to get the pick on the kiriko not being able to hit the shots but winston still being able to be back there zenyatta cleaning up the sombra on the back end kiriko looks like she teleported out but she might get caught here as Hanzo was getting caught on the backside trying to get a reversal going as the Winston ult for Valpo Esports comes out chance to slapping them around <laughs> biggest, thi biggest thing right now you may not get some kills uh, I take that back <laughs> but you can at least separate your team and yeah. I think that's that's the difference between what you see a good Winston ult and a great Winston ult is you can get kills with both of them but depending on where you knock people is going to be the hard part and it looks like there's going to be an ult coming in from Bradley's Lucio and the uh, ult as well from um, Sombra. Yeah, oh my goodness. Amazing job. And there's the... Holy... Excuse me. <laughs> the, there's the quadra kill right there from <laughs> Fan Beauty. Uh, I mean, we're talking about ults and everything, like comboing and countering. Who cares? Fan Beauty just hit Q and then right clicked for <laughs> five times. Who cares? He can do whatever he wants back there. Um, yeah. Amazing show right there. You can Just... obviously see that um, uh, Bradley is getting really nervous. Mm -hmm. Like, they keep backing up a lot more. This counter pick for Winston was such a good choice for, uh, for Valpo. I'd agree with you. Yeah. They 
being able to just give your team a little bit more front line. Um, I mean, like you saw, like they're backing up, they're moving back. And I think the biggest thing is because this team now has someone that's pressuring them. I mean, with the earlier pick with the D.Va, you were able to displace, but after her thrusters, I mean, you were stuck for a little bit. And because of that, with the Sojourn, with the, like, Kiriko being able to reposition really quickly, they could damage burst that D.Va through. But with Winston, you can't because he's just going to jump and follow you. I mean, it's the hardest part. Now he's going to get his all one more again. Yep. Ooh, the hack did stop him from ulting there, so it's pretty clutch on the Sombra, but I mean the focus on Winston just paid off because the rest of Valpo was able to sit on that point. It looks like objective one will uh, go 100% to Valpo Esports' side, a 3-0 yeah. lead. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to see here, taking that offense, what do you think Valpo can use kind of like, cha like champion pick-wise? going into this defense what do you think worked what do you think didn't for bradley um for bradley obviously the sombra is still a good pick being mm -hmm. able to stop like several people from using like their own alts when they recognize hmm, maybe this alt is getting a little bit full maybe we should stop them mm -hmm. but also i feel like the sojourn and winston just aren't working out anymore because they did go for the ditto for winston yep. and clearly it seems like the player with the better winston did win so <laughs> i think yep i i agree with you I, I think also it's a big point is with the comp that bradley ran right mm -hmm. it was great because you were able to outlast a diva stun but mm -hmm. you're not able to outlast the five second cooldown that winston's jump is on right yeah. so they were able to back up do damage get kills and push people out of position mm -hmm. but now facing this winston they don't have that option anymore because Winston follows. Yes. So they're, they're still stuck in that danger zone of Winston's Tesla coil. And that allows people like FanPewDie, people like Dirty Wolf to sit behind and just shoot forward. Um, yeah. It makes it really easy for them. I mean, obviously you still need to hit your shots, but now with that pressure off of people shooting them, they can land back there and just quadra kill all they want. It's great. Yeah. So they're trying actually what uh, Valpo did with Steven actually trying to go for D.Va, but we saw how that worked last time and it didn't really work that well, to be honest. I think what we have to watch for though is that there is a little bit of a switch up. They do have the Genji that's coming in as well with them. Yes. Um, they do have the Genji and they have the Kiriko Lucio. So they have that speed and that range that they were looking for last match. So it's a little bit of a deviation. I'm, I'm kind of interested to see if this works a little bit better for Bradley. Yeah. And they definitely have getting rid of their Sombra, so it will be a lot better to like pick out like different champions who have more like useful like secondary moves and ultimates. Because now they can view it and know that they're not going to be riskfully like taken out. Yep. Yeah, it looks like a couple of kills here. Uh, Winston having to dive back on point. Looks like they're gonna back up here, but Fan Beauty getting picked and Wistful getting picked as well. The burst is being too strong. Sojourn popping up with the kill up from the Hanzo. Genji is in the back line right now on the supports, but the kill, uh, the Lucio jumping back on him as well, getting the kill on uh, Zenyatta, and then yeah. Genji finishing off the Hanzo with Eva. I mean, the the comp that we saw, they definitely made the correction that Falfa was looking for with their comp. Mm -hmm. where they have a lot more dive to follow up this D.Va so that they can stagger when they're pushing in. Yeah. Um, D.Va pushing in as well. Maybe, yeah. and Ana just getting out of this. Nano boosting yeah. this Winston, seeing if they can play a little bit contest here. Looking like they're not going to try and give this point up right now. Ult coming out also from Kiriko, but the, uh, the Winston ult coming out as well, trying to just knock off point a little bit. Um, I think that Valpo is just giving this point, yep and they're gonna just back up here. Yeah, you could definitely see when Devo is actually going for Ana, which is definitely a smart play because Ana was really helping out that Winston mm -hmm. right there. It was definitely helping out, but they do need to back up. But we do have a Sojourn ult coming up and same thing with Yenzeta and Hanzo on our team. But they do have a D.Va bomb ray, so I would expect that at any point, and I would get like closer to areas with walls and stuff where you can hide behind. Yep. As a D.Va player myself, we know D.Va is going for that full team kill with the D.Va bomb. <laughs> and it looks like they're going to get a little bit of a top dive here as well. Genji ult coming out, being able to pick the Hanzo. The ult from D.Va picking the DPS, and now Valpo is down both their DPS with tank and healers only. 
uh, healer, healer, luckily, Zen is practically a damage dealer <laughs> as he takes two picks. Um, D.Va picking off the Ana as well, but the Discord Orb being able to stop the D.Va. The kick with the new knockback being able to damage off. And, I mean, Fusik is just balling back there right now. He's, he's I, having fun. I guess our Fusik is now damaged. Yeah, or... no, we just they just roll swapped really quick. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's fine. I mean, you can, you can tell when a Zenyatta player just feels comfortable because he was in D.Va's face hitting, that, hitting those crit shots. I mean, crit shots as Zenyatta, not, o not only are they good, I mean, they're just satisfying to hit. <laughs> it's such a big hitbox. You have the Discord orb, you get to melt people. <laughs> the, like, one-tap headshot that you can get with your Discord on the, like, baby diva is always so worth it. But, I mean, when you're when you're just comfortable like that, it looks like we're going to have a Hanzo ult out here as well. A lot of damage on that diva, but the Lucio ulting as well so that they can get through this point without much damage being taken. Uh, bouncing from the top, you can see Soldier and Slide and Bounce becoming a huge help for their team right now. With the pick on Soldier being a little bit too overzealous. But uh, Kiriko coming back and getting one kill, and then yeah. Speedweed finishing the second as Genji. Kiriko yeah. with a double kill, being able to push back. I mean, you can see Diva trying to focus off this Hanzo and it working. Kiriko being able to keep it keep both of their teammates up and it looks like the ult is going to come out from Winston trying to prevent them from staggering their spawns here even if the it won't have count them out. definitely good. Sorry, I cut you off. No, like, no. <laughs> don't mind it. Don't mind it. But this is definitely like, that was definitely the perfect choice for the ult because that Tivo is really, really doing well. So you need to take that Diva out at whatever cost. So like... Yep. Sometimes you have to risk an alt for just one player just to make sure they're out. I agree. Yep. Sometimes it's like with that Winston going low, obviously he didn't want to die because they would have staggered those spawns because he didn't mm -hmm. die. Um, Diva didn't recognize me and just gotten too lost in the sauce at that point because she didn't recognize how close the payload actually was. Mm -hmm. So knowing that kind of info stops people from being too far pushed up. but. Just didn't work out in their favor. Kiriko will coming out trying to get through this choke point here. Uh, working out well. It's a pick going on the Sombra. Uh, another dive up top as well. A amazing sleep on the Winston that jumped up, saving uh, Hanzo there. And they'll be able to bounce back. Um, Fusi is just falling out right now. Zen. <laughs> he, he is able to sit up top, throw discords, and just throw and balls. Still is he still has his ultimate, so when he can go in there, and when he knows he needs to, he can just jump in, use his ult, and the entire team's like gonna be invulnerable for like a few minutes. Yep. I mean, I, I like you saw right there that huge sleep from Ana, right? Mm -hmm. On that diving, Winston was able to force him off, and because they were forced off of that top, that just allowed Fusik on the Zenyatta to sit up there and snipe. I mean. With this comp that Valpo is running right now, you have a backliner with Sombra, you have a dive with Winston, you have a, and then you have three backline snipers yeah. with the two supports and Hanzo. So honestly, Bradley, I think, is struggling to have a hard time. Hey, where should we focus? <laughs> and it looks like there's going to be a pick here for Sombra, just a little easy kill with the Hanzo uh, assisting it there. Another Discord coming out. Yeah, definitely we, um, are seeing the counter pick for the Sombra on our team. Unfortunately, I don't think it's working as well as they're hoping because I have not really seen much of the Sombra, but that might be a good thing because Sombra could just be swinking this whole time. And there's the counter ult uh, yes. of that Genji Blade coming out with this Zen. I mean, Winston being able to jump back in here, Cory on the ult. You better watch out though, Sojin gets back in this fight. She's at 95, it's gonna be tough. They're pulling out the uh, Wrecking Ball, trying to counter pick our Winston. It is not I mean, working though. The, I... nano, the nano on that Winston right there was huge. Being able to stop it, and that stops them giving Valpo game two. Yeah. Uh, going one and one into the series. We are playing a best of five here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So I think things that worked there in that match especially, um, we saw we had a couple of quick picks to be able to switch up. Um, playing around those high grounds and really focusing their team comp on uh, are we playing frontline or are we playing backline and they chose the backline as we saw I mean I, I was just stunned at this point I didn't even have any commentary I just watched a four piece but um, I think the biggest thing with that kind of comp that we had right we've we've been seeing a lot of splits 
today, yeah. right? We've been seeing a lot of Genjis mixed with Sombras. We've been seeing a lot of, like, Sojourns mixed with Dive Comps. We've been mm-hmm. seeing a lot of mixed comps. Yeah. So now we have one that was almost fully backlined. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had a Sombra to jump opposite backline, and then we had three snipers in Winston. Winston drags yeah. enough attention. We had three snipers in the back. It worked. <laughs> and it's, it's similar to what Bradley ran in their first game. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean... Going into this third match, uh, knowing Circuit Royale, right, a very defense-heavy map for that mm-hmm. first pick, who do you think is the tank hero that you want to go with on this map? Um, I would probably think, like, I don't I don't remember too much about... Oh, they're going to Route 66. It may be Route 66. Or is it Junkertown? Did, I remember we did receive an update. Um, it may not be Junkertown. It may not be Route 66. Um, the maps are kind of rotating around a little bit. They're, <laughs> they're just having fun. They're like spinning a random wheel. But yep, okay. Oh, okay. And with the Junkertown bug that is happening right now, especially with like people spawning under the map, um, overall just being like very, just annoying to play on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's also like FPS drops that are insane as well. Yeah. Um, with Junkertown being banned. It looks like they are going to elect to just choose another map. It may be Route 66 here. Yeah, um, Route, Route 66 would definitely be probably a good option for like any team actually, mm-hmm. um, depending on which th- what they're going with. Not really sure what they're planning on, but we will see. I mean, Route 66 is a solid uh, map just in general. I mean, not only is it fun to play, but it allows for a lot of different engagement types, right? Mm-hmm. When you have the first point, you have a lot of dive comps, right? You have a lot of tracers, genjis, <laughs> being able to get back to the back line. Winston is really fun to jump on top of the uh, gas mm-hmm. station as well yeah. and just kind of play around there. <laughs> but um, once, I mean, once you hit that checkpoint one, you're mm-hmm. able to start widening it out. I see a lot of ashes come out. I see a lot of Cassidy's come out as well. Um, these kind of just ranges that you can push people out um, are really important. And I kind of hope that we see it coming into this game. Um, I mean, we've seen the we've seen the Fan Beauty and we've seen the Dirty Wolf both <laughs> on a Cassidy, both on an Ash. Yeah. So they're definitely not strangers to these picks. What I'm really looking for, though, if I can be honest, I want to see the Widow pick. I really <laughs> want to see the attacking widow pick for the first shot right here, because I... as we're looking at right now on this directed cam, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> as we're looking on this directed cam right here, mm-hmm. um, that little rock pillar, people oh love to sit up there and throw abilities over the corner. So yep. a widow pick just looking in, but <sighs> looks like my dreams won't come true. <laughs> maybe one day, maybe we, one day. We do see Afara, but we yep. might still. Um, Bradley still has one more choice on a DPS user. They are pulling out a Mercy, though. We haven't seen Mercy this game. Yep. Um, I do like when I see Mercy because I can commentate on Mercy <laughs> a lot. I'm glad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've, I've been missing that. I thought there was a few times where we could pull out a Mercy. We do are, we are seeing that a little bit, if you can see with Iana. <laughs> yeah. Iana's definitely planning at sniping a little bit. Oh, and there's well. the lineups, yeah. Look, it looks like they're trying to line up a little bit for this front. Um, yeah. The Bacta is going to come down in a second with the grenade. Yeah, we're hearing exactly what you were talking about earlier with the Winston. A mm. great idea to jump in, try and attack them from. But we do see the Fara trying to get the high ground and heavily attack. And it looks like we have the Sombra in the back line as well, combined with the Winston for a nice little dive there. Sombra being able to also get the kill on Farah, but while they are spending time in the back line, the front line is dying too Bradley. Yeah. Uh, being able to TP out just really quick. Mercy did heal that Ana, but we don't really see that actually working out well. Um, as obviously their damage is still dying, and the Zenyatta is still trying to pop off with the attacks. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can see that the Far and Mercy are very backline. Um, I think that this pick was taken, especially because Bapo likes to take. Buffalo likes to take these close range characters, right? Yeah. So you give Farah, you give a little bit of sustainability to survive those Sojourns, uh, right clicks, and you have yourself a good comp here, but because that Farah got separated early, it allowed Valpo Esports to get that pick and be able to push up. I mean, it is dangerous. Sombra does do a lot of damage now with that buff, 
Hang on, I'm sorry. I need you to call it. that. That was an excellent sight from Dirty Wolf here on that Mercy. Mm -hmm. Just a last minute pick while she was trying to flee. She thought she got away, but she didn't. That was amazing. That was charge. a really, really nice turn. That was no. so nice. I mean, I, as we're saying, just being able to get that burst damage out. I, like I was I was mentioning before with the far, uh, pharmacy that they are running right now for Bradley, mm -hmm. the most dangerous part against Valpo is that with like the somber hack and everything that goes on, you're able to out heal that but with the Sojourn as well being able to reach up top, I mean, they might just ignore the Farah right now. They have so much movement, they're able to get around a little bit faster. Yeah, but they might not be able to. Obviously, our Farah is taking down our Sojourn right now. And Dirty Wolf definitely was not good on our side. Um, there's a knockoff on the Ana as dead. well. A nice positioning there. I mean, we saw um, uh, Sombra and... Summer and Winston are really comboing together right now this match. It's, it's looking kind of nice. Yeah, he was definitely trying to knock that Zarya off. I could see that he was really going for it. Mm -hmm. Looks like a little bit of a wipe here. Um, Valpo yeah. got, did get a little bit staggered. The issue with a comp like this is that you do get those backline picks that you like, but against the Zarya, against someone that's so strong into taking damage and turning it back into reciprocal, mm -hmm. um, it really becomes hard to leave your backline stranded like that. And we have a damage boost with Farah being able to sit in that crack too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's get obviously, a couple of shots in. Obviously, like in the back, um, the Zenyeto is able to be like one shot by the Farah, probably a headshot, honestly. Mm -hmm. And that definitely has damaged them because they were definitely probably going for something with that. It, it looks like we have a jump up here as well. Uh, Mercy's Mercy passive healing, not enough to get through that. Um, but Draxos pushing up a little bit. Yeah, definitely with the Mercy, um, getting that Mercy down, she was doing a really good job at babying both Farah and the um, and other units. So she was doing so, trying to get her out as soon as possible. A great push right there. I mean, the nano boost and the ult from Farah, but not being able to pick up anything except for an Ana kill after the ult. Um, yeah really just wasn't enough there even though it was a pretty nice uh, combo of ults they're just yeah. Valpo's positioning was not grouped enough but I mean you can't blame Bradley they have to make a play there because yeah, exactly. if I'm them right now I do give this point oh never mind they, I mean they kill the Winston you push um, I was gonna say that they give this kind of point but some result coming out as well with the Sojourn ult too pretty nasty combo being able to one shot with just body shots uh, Mercy not being able to get the res off as well. I mean, damage going insane right now for the team. I was gonna say the Winston death was more than enough, but with the combo of ults of Sombra and Dirty Wolf, it's it's enough damage to get you past any non-tank. Yeah, definitely um, knocking down that Mercy while she was trying to heal, probably a good option, and probably just threw them off their game because they were really expecting to keep using Mercy. We do see an Ash coming out from Bradley though, so like you were mentioning earlier, with that. Yep. These point two and threes, they give a lot of range. They give a lot of straightaways, right? And these straightaways are great for Ash, not only for a dynamite, but just for a headshot potential. And I mean, again, we're seeing this backline dive, but this time it's not just the Sombra and the... It's not just Sombra and Winston, it's uh, Zenyatta as well. Yeah. So. It did go out a little bit better. I mean, we can see right here, Sombra is sitting up top, just waiting for a little bit of a funny move. <laughs> you do have to be careful here. Um, with Valpo Esports' ults going up right now, Val he does have the Winston ult, and you're going to see him pop it right now. Yep. And we do have the Zen ult as well, being yep. ready to get like used at any time. But, um, there was a pick. They did change to the Reaper, but the other DPS going down there. They're gonna be forced to back up, but Sombra is just solo pushing the payload. Oh no. Oh can, no. We can hear them popping off yeah. in the back. Well, I mean, when you do sit behind the payload, I mentioned it before, I saw Sombra sitting up there hiding. And I'm like, okay, something's up. Like, he's he's not gonna be up top for some reason. And they just baited so hard. Um... <laughs> We, we do a little bit of trolling here at Valpo Esports. We, <laughs> we do a couple of funnies. You know, we have a good time. Yeah. So. I've seen a lot of people actually complain about the UI because <laughs> for some of them, they're like, you can't see that they're moving the point and yeah. all of that stuff. And like, 
but sometimes you can take advantage of it and you can just troll the other team like mm -hmm. like Sombra did with Bradley there. Yep. So who knows, they might pull out the same strat against us. <laughs> I mean, hey, we'll, we'll see. Looks like they are opting for the far, uh, pharmacy again on the offense. Mm -hmm. Might just be a comfort pick for them uh, going into this game. Yeah, we do see the Ash over there, and we also see a different um, tank being picked, which is Zarya. Mm -hmm. um, definitely interested to see why that is for us. Um, very interested right now. I'm... I mean, if we're if we're thinking about team comp here, mm -hmm. right? For my idea, right, Valpo is opting for another long range comp. Yeah. Um, we see the Ash, Hanzo, Zen, and um, Ana, right? Mm -hmm. You want a tank that can actually peel for them, but mm -hmm. someone that can still sit front line, and Zarya fits that because of her bubble. Okay. You're yeah, able. True. You're able to throw bubbles back. You're able to keep your team in there. Even if they are getting jumped by that farmer side, right? So it's gonna. This game's really gonna be up to: Is Wistful going to throw enough bubbles back to save her team here? And yeah. can their team hit enough shots while they're bubbling? And we're seeing here a lot of damage going on. Both Zarya's just shooting into each other. They do not care. They want as much damage for both of them. It's like a mutual agreement here. But as we can see, I mean, you're killing enough time. You got the kill on the far with the res for Mercy. And there's another kill going for Fan Beauty. 15 health, not seeing much. Uh, Zarya winning that fight and getting another one and then getting a third as well. Maybe for a fourth here. <laughs> and another pop off from Wistful. Uh, just a ton of damage coming from their back line. Too. And a little bit of a freak out. There we go. Show a little bit of emotion, Wistful. That away. <laughs> I mean, like I said, that peel was just more than enough because if you just wait for Ash to hit her shots, if you wait for Hanzo to hit the shots, more than enough long range damage to get past this combo. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and it looks like they're gonna swap to Ash as well, but Ash is getting a little bit confused there. Yeah. Being able to sit up top, I mean, right. It's, it's the smart choice. It's the smart choice to get away from that far because with the amount of long range damage that they have, especially hit scan, um, it becomes really, really hard to play. Yes. This, I, what I'm worried about, and there's the ult as well, and the double kill from Fan Beauty. A couple of dashes here, uh, missing a couple of shots, but <laughs> still the Sojin up top, still the Ash coming from the back, and they're going to be forced to back up. Uh, uh, what I'm interested in is Jacknos has not changed his DPS. He has. He is. He has only been yeah. Sojin. Um, I'm not sure if that's just a choice of he's just better on Sojourn if he like if there's not another character he wants to go to Or maybe it's just like the best choice for them. He does get the Bob out before dying though uh, A little bit too far pushed up getting burst down by Sojourn as you know as we just mentioned him Yeah, but, um Ash is looping around from the left side looking for a couple of picks here huge dynamite on the Zen as well uh, Kitsune coming out from uh, blue side Bradley is gonna get a lot of picks here but Dirty Wolf turning it around with a double pick double kill as well mm -hmm. kind of be sitting up there uh, dynamite just being enough burn damage to get out mm -hmm. I mean we're gonna see now that they have the tank back yep there's the boosted <laughs> Zen let's go he's sitting on him oh see if this they is are... enough damage to get yeah. a couple of kills here and they there's one are... <laughs> that was enough to just pressure him as fan BD comes back you I mean just... that is that is funny. I love it. I love it. To you... have enough trust. I'm sorry. To have enough trust in your Zen to be like, hey, take the ult. Take the <laughs> nano boost. Do it. To have enough there. That, that's amazing. I love that. You can just see how much scare, like, fear was in Bradley that they're like, back up, back up, and mm -hmm. get more support just to try and take out the Zen. Yeah. Like, normally you don't see that for support. Maybe you got like two people maximum trying to knock out of support, but this time did not happen. We do yep. see Zen's ult right now um, helping boost that, but we do see a counter ult from Lucio boosting their health. So. It looks like we have a jump on point as well. Uh, a trade right there on both the Zen and the um, Zen and Sojourn. A couple of kills coming in as well. Kiriko going down, Lucio going out for Bradley, but Tank Wistful is also dying as well to the Zarya. Um, looks like pretty even trades right now. And it looks like right as we were talking about, Draxonus has swapped now. He is winning <laughs> the Tracer. But this, this Zarya is just way too strong right now with the power that she has. Mm -hmm. 
um, being able to get that checkpoint very last second. Nice little two minute uh, refresh coming up for Bradley. Yeah, so definitely, um, obviously, I don't think Valpo knows right now that there is a tracer. I'm not sure if that's different. But if they don't know that, uh, if they do know, they need to really keep an eye on their back line. Just like occasionally have one person really chucking backwards because we all know Tracer loves to flank when she can. And it's back to something. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it didn't last long. That, it, that sucks. That, that was a really good analysis that was just wasted because now it's right back to swamp. But no, I, I agree with you. They do have to be careful, especially with these diving back lines that they mm -hmm, have. Yeah. But um, I mean, not anymore. <laughs> it's, I don't know. We do have a Hanzo ult coming up, and same thing with the Zarya, so we're not sure when he's gonna pull that. Well, he can't now. <laughs> yep. I mean, I think what they're waiting for right now is a couple of ults to get popped out now so that they can pull this team wipe. I mean, that is pretty big. The only ult that's coming up maybe now is Bob, but really that's not enough if Valpo can corner this here. They may try to make a hold here. It looks like Zarya's gonna get bumped down, so she has no choice. She's gonna have to play this here, and that's yep. a lot of damage. There's the ult coming in and the power of healing her back to health. Being able to jump in, the Bob coming out for Bradley. But that is just so much damage on both knocking, sides here. Yeah, knocking out the Kiriko is definitely the best shot they had to get that. Unfortunately, we are at a team kill for Valpo, making them hit the refresh almost exactly on the money yet again. So very close game compared to when Valpo is actually pushing. Uh, you're gonna have to see here. I think Bradley's starting to catch their stride now, especially with this offense. Um, they're playing from the front. And playing from in front, I mean, we saw it on Lee Jung Tower in the very first one. When they play from in front, they like to play on the offensive. They like to get dangerous. So unless Valpo can play defensively coming into the rest of this match. And there's a kill on that Zarya. Being able to push up, maybe stop this point right here. Um, I mean, not exactly the best point to hold, especially coming around this corner. There's a lot of angles that you can attack from. But just any stop is a good stop uh, that yeah. I consider right now. Yeah, right now they're... Um Obviously, you can see they get very scattered when their tank is because a lot of them are actually pretty rare, frail compared to like other damage and DPS units. They are quite frail, so they know that Zarya needs to be at the front to help them and back them up. Yep. I mean, we saw, like, like you said, they, they started to back off there. It's, there's a lot of things where you just have to play this safe until you have your tank now that there aren't bailouts anymore with those two tanks. I mean, I keep yeah. saying bailouts, but that was just the way the game was, right? A lot of playing it. That's a lot of burst damage going down on that Zarya. Uh, Zenyatta being able to trade one DPS for it. It looks like they're going to try and chip gear, but it's just not enough. Um, Draxnos yeah, and their Zarya being able to push back into that line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Zenyatta might have to be forced to use his ult soon just to make sure that he can keep them alive and hope for a team wipe because we do have 35 seconds, which will struggle, but we do hear an ult. And there's the we ult hear. coming out from Lucio and from Zarya on Four Bradley's side and the Kiriok as well. Four but different alts at the same time. That we was. Do have, we do have the Zen ult as well coming up, but it looks like it won't we be enough. We just got a Sojourn ult. We. They needed that. They at least got out the Kiriko, but they did not get it. This is a close match, honestly. Yeah. With the with the strength that that last push had, especially with the ults that they all popped off. I mean, the econ that Bradley was running with all their ultimate timers paid off right there. And I mean, yeah. I was try I was going to mention it earlier, but the way that they were staggering it, right? Valpo mm -hmm. was taking like one to two ults every time, right? They were trying to put together combos. Mm -hmm. The dangerous part was that they weren't winning those fights with yeah. those one to two. So if you're not going to win those, you're setting up for Bradley to be able to pop four ults like they mm -hmm. just did right there. Yeah. So we're going to have to see. I mean, going into the overtime match, one minute, fast pace, going to be able to get moving here. Uh, looks like somewhat the same comp coming from Bradley's side, but a little bit of a change up. We do have the um, Junkrat. I, I think the idea with picking Junkrat here is that mm -hmm the traps and the bombs and the concussion that you have is time slow as yeah. much as it is damage it's high damage you are able to slow the other team and their push really really hard and we're gonna see he's gonna set up a trap probably right around the front of this here and there it is just in case 
So yeah. that if they do try to run through here, it's going to be a lot harder to actually hit this. Yep, and there's what he's looking for right now is they're going to walk through that tunnel. He's going to blow concussion. It's going to hit into the trap, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, uh, that's all he's sitting for right now. Yeah, definitely trying to get at least one of the, either like a support to go up that way or the tank would be incredibly helpful because knocking out their tank early will definitely be good. Especially uh, the thing that they didn't plan for though was that they did have a Sojourn and a Lucio who both really don't need floor. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, the, the floor is optional with those guys. You can kind of just bounce around and fly around wherever you want, which honestly, more power to them. But Fusic popping off with two kills on the DPS and the support as well. Another yeah. one, and him being able to just sit here and do that damage is more than enough for Valpo to be able to hold this point here. Another frag out, I mean, Kiriko getting shot down by Dirty Wolf's uh, rockets here. Lucio on point getting a little bit of shield for that Zarya, but Zarya on uh, Wistful being yeah. able to just gun down. Yeah, we are seeing a few different changes being played. Seeing, obviously, the Soldier 76 come out and the Tracer to definitely flank them. I don't think they were expecting it because that definitely affected how they would come in for, like, the back. I think I think it is important to those couple of switches. Not only just like what you said with the damage, kind of the comp switch up that they're not expecting, mm -hmm. but um, just the speed. I mean, yeah. you need to be fast, right? So giving that sprint, giving that Lucio, giving that uh, those kind of boosts that you need mm -hmm. are enough to get them back to point and be able to wipe there. And that's a great hold for Valpo. This is completely doable for their yeah. fight. I mean, we saw a push that was much farther in the first phase of the game. So we're gonna see how does how does Bradley, excuse me, how does Bradley actually counteract this? Yeah, so obviously Valpo has a lot of time on the board. Mm -hmm. We do see the Orisa, Orisa that we came out. And I we do, do like see that Orisa. <laughs> I do <laughs> like that Orisa. We see a lot of change coming from Bradley. Not so much. We've seen all of these picks from Valpo, obviously, before. Drakno still not changing off the Sojourn. Honestly, nope. if he did change, it probably would be... A Honestly, a change right now probably needed because you know Bre Valpo can just easily expect oh there's going to be a sojourn every single time and just mm -hmm. no to counter pick it. I, d I do want to ask like if he does switch off sojourn, who do you think would fit here? <sighs> I'm trying to think. Um, probably like a sniper. Honestly, like you were saying, the Widowmaker like, that you yeah. keep <laughs> hoping I wish, for. I wish. I um, wish. A sniper would definitely be good. Being able to like. <laughs> you know what? The Orisa, the Orisa is good enough for me. I'm happy with that. <laughs> You're because happy with the Orisa. She has so much knockback. She has so much control that it makes a lot of sense. We're gonna see the Sombra start to move around a little bit. Notice that he's not throwing his orb in a place that's actually safe, like a health pack. Yeah. He's going to use it to reposition so he can stay in this fight. And you can see the bounce back that they have here. We're going to have to see this Orisa start to zone out a little bit. The anti coming in with the pick for Fusiki. Obviously knocking out that Baptiste with the Zenyatta, that was absolutely nice. But that, that Reaper kill is huge. But yes. the huge just lineup of headshots there for Fusik. I mean, he's getting aggressive. He does what he wants now. He's kicking around. He's having fun. And there it is. There's another kick that he he's enjoying the knockback buff. I promise you. Oh my. God. Arisa, and it looks like it won't be enough. I mean, Mo Moira trying to hop back on point. But it looks like Reaper won't be able to TP fast enough, and that is going to be match or game two, going to Valpo Shield. Um, that was game three. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh. This is going to put Valpo Shield at a 2-1 lead in this series right now. Um, yeah. Going into the best of five, I mean, next game that Valpo wins will be the final like decider. Yeah, um, this this is really close. Honestly, I think next game it could be anyone's game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have had like one Valpo and then two, or one Bradley and then two Valpo back to back. But depending on how Bradley plays this, they could play it super well and just take the match. And then we have a very even game. Again, we know they can do incredibly well. It just really depends on how they decide to play this. I agree. No, and I think my most like excited thing, the most thing I'm looking for here, finally going to get a push map. <laughs> We're finally going to play a push map. Yes! I have been... I have been gunning for it all day i've been gunning for the orisa the widowmaker and push maps those are the three things i hit the orisa i hit the push map 
If I hit Widowmaker this game, I need to go t- <laughs> like buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> I need to go do something. But um, it's it's so great. So yeah. I think what I want to talk about, especially for push maps, what I've been waiting for all day here, <laughs> is the dynamic of push maps, right? We've seen in these last couple games, especially on Esperanza, when we played, or not on Esperanza, sorry, um, on Pariso, mm-hmm. right? On that game, uh, or that game two match, right? With those kind of matches, we saw a lot of those pushes were lost and won because of overextension. The biggest thing that push is big on is that overextension does not matter. You do not need multiple people pushing the point. You need one to reach max speed. All you want to do is push. Ironically, name of the game, right? So when you have these overextensions, these run-ups that you can have, they're now paid off for. So you're open to a lot more of an aggressive match. And that's what I'm excited to see here. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love the enthusiasm for push. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Honestly, I've actually started really liking push too. I've like mm-hmm. every time I see it, I'm just like, ooh, and I keep forgetting how it's played, but then I remember and it just gets yep. so exciting it's, because it's fast paced. The the game can change one way or another every mm-hmm. single time. It's an excellent new mode for Overwatch. I really like I it agree. personally. It it complements really well with the five v five because mm-hmm. it's a lot faster of a game. <laughs> so now you have an objective that takes in like two seconds. Yeah. Right. Two seconds to take an objective. It sprints back to its original position. You're trying to fight back into the enemy base. <laughs> it's a great it's a great match. It, it, obviously, like for people watching, it's obviously my favorite game mode. <laughs> Not, not only just like playing it, if it wasn't obvious enough, but I like talking about it too, because I like talking about what I like, you know, like sue me, whatever. But um, going, I mean, going into this match, we're going to see more Sojourns, we're going to see more, I mean, it's, I, I personally as a League of Legends caster, right, I'm used to seeing a lot of the same champions in rotation, mm-hmm. so I'm kind of getting deja vu here, seeing Sojourn every single match. I don't think there was a match that we haven't seen Sojourn in yet. There has not been... But um, I will definitely sue you later for talking right. too much about pushing. Makes sense. Makes obviously sense. Obviously, we can't talk that much, even though it's a match, you know. That is that is understandable. I think, <laughs> um, it, you know, I, whether how much money you cost me will matter, but we can talk about that later. Um, it's fine. We're in debt anyway. All right, cool. Yeah, true. We are college students, let's be honest. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, going into this map, right, there's a reason that Sojin is picked 24-7. Um, yes. Genuinely, such such a good champ right now. Such a mm-hmm. high skill expression for her. Uh, her E pairs very nicely with her ultimate with mm-hmm. the slowing and constant damage that it has. But um, Esperanza, especially as a push map, um, as you see right here, what we're hovering over, this is going to be the main meeting point, right? Mm-hmm. Around this kind of bell tower that's like f- located to the left. I, there's our big guy. What's up, man? <laughs> um, but around our big guy, right? There's a lot of bridges. There's a lot of high points to take. Yeah. Sojin loves these spots, mm-hmm. right? Being able to slide, you can slide and jump onto that bridge, not using the stairs instantly. And that gives you a, such a speed advantage getting yeah. to this point. That little chokehold that's on the right side as well. The open area that's onto the left that we can see. It's, it's really important on how these guys want to play it around their comps. And I mean, what a surprise. We see another Sojin, right? But Draxnos has not picked yet. Come on, do it. Do it. Don't pick Sojin. Pick like Tracer. Pick pick Sombra. Pick, like, don't anyone. pick Sojin. But like, if they pick Sojin, I understand. I'm not mad at you. There it is. It is Sojin. Okay. Um, we called it. Pretty, pretty similar team comps here. Maybe outside of the Genji for Sombra and the Ana for uh, Kiriko here. Uh, Valpo Shield not opting to pick Kiriko. Kiriko in really any of these matches. I mean, we've seen it once, but outside of that, not really much. A um, couple of chips here. I mean, you can see taking that early bridge advantage. And we're going to have a little bit of a scrap here early. I mean, like I said, it's push. We're in the action right now. <laughs> yeah, deep getting really head to front, but that is not a good thing. Obviously, losing her tank really early into her BBD perform, which is not that good. Um, because that, even though you still have five players, you are completely out of like the match because you don't have your tank. And there she goes down very quickly, only leaving two healers alive. Definitely gonna not be good. <laughs> 
up. We still are seeing Sojourn definitely pick off those healers. Lucio honestly was staying alive for longer than I expected him to. Yeah. I do agree with you. Sorry about that, folks. Um, <laughs> Lucio was bouncing around a little bit. I mean, I, I got so excited about push that my hiccups kicked in. Um, <laughs> but we, we did see Lucio bouncing around a little bit, contesting that point. But um, as we worked back around, I mean, Sombra is a very slow burn character. The longer that you stay on point, the more hacks she can throw and the easier it is to lay down that damage. Yeah. And eventually, it's, I mean, it's it's a never-ending upward graph, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually, it's going to overpass you. But being able to kill her fast is a big thing. The hack on the Winston that jumped in and the sleep as well, trying to isolate them. But Blue Side taking back advantage of this push point, uh, being able to run around. Zarya looks like getting countered a little bit. Uh, Kiriko hitting a couple of headshots, doing a lot of damage. Sojin walking up on them. And that's going to be almost a team wipe for Bradley, uh, being able to run back on this point. Just a solid one. I mean, under those bridges we, we saw right there, it's yeah. very, very hard to group with your team. Yeah, Valpo definitely backing up, obviously. You want to group up mm -hmm. for more of a thing. Let them get a little bit further, but honestly, chances are we're probably going to be stopped before they can actually make it to around where we were when we went around. I, ha I have to agree with you there. I mean, they just have to get a little bit more in tune together. Uh, the Zarya ult coming out from Valpo, the Kiriko ult to counter that as well, just trying to get a little bit of damage. There is speed weed on Genji with the ultimate, but the nano boost going on Zarya, trying to counteract it a little bit, but Lucio also coming out from Valpo, and it's enough to stop only one kill coming in, but um, Speedweed still popping off, still getting a couple of kills from Genji, but uh, that block is just not enough to stop that Zarya bomb, and we are now tracking Big Man. He's back on the move. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, oh no, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I think a big strong point of push especially is that it does encourage teams to not wait, right? Yeah. Staggering spawns on push is not exactly a hard thing to do. But it's also not as beneficial as a control point, as an escort point. Because you see right here, right as Bradley's back, they are going to run on that point, whether it's on yeah. like the robot or not. But on this one, Wistful was ready. I mean, they did just get caught out. Uh, Sojourn lost her dash, was not able to hop up, so getting caught down on point was a little bit hard for her. But we're going to see, I mean, the Winston and the Kiriko being able to run back. And the burst shot, not enough damage to kill. But Kiriko hacked while not being able to TP. Both of them very low here, and it looks like it's going to be a cleanup by Dirty Wolf on the Sojourn. Yeah, obviously they did not expect the Sojourn and Lucio to follow them. They were really trying to retreat, hoping that they could get away, but it just was not enough. Obviously, Summer was trying to hack the Sojourn, trying to make sure, um, and hacking, I think, the Winston too, just so he can't jump and pounce on them. Definitely good because his jump is really bad sometimes. So we see a pick there from Dirty Wolf on the other Sojourn, but the traded back speed where he gets the kill on Sombra. Dirty Wolf with another kill. Oh, these DPS are just trading kills here, but Winston and. Oh no, no! We have been a trade every single one. One for one tank, one for one DPS, one for one support, but now Wistful is evening the odds here. Uh, Winston all popping back out, but almost full charge on the Zarya here. Um, hack on the Winston, making sure that you can't dodge, but a lot of damage going out on the Zarya, and that's going to be enough to kill. Uh, Fusik on the Lucio, getting the kill on the Winston, though, to trade another tank kill. Yeah, that ult was a little bit of a waste for Zarya, because it did not slow that Winston down whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like, he just, he jumped into it, and he jumped right out of it. Um, yep. Incredible play from him, but still shocking that didn't do more for them. Yep. I, I mean, I agree with you, especially, we, ha we have to think also, remember that Kiriko, on her E, it cleanses status effects, yeah. right? That counts for Zarya ult, so when you see Zarya ult and you get Kiriko E, you can run out. So we've seen that, this game especially, like, happen a couple of times, because it's just that utility that it offers. And a couple of, a little bit of a push here, but it looks like Valpo is still going to stay in control, about a 40 meter lead in front of uh, Bradley here. Yeah. And we have to be careful. I mean, they did make it past the advanced spawn. If they can get to this advanced spawn here without uh, Bradley turning it, 
it's going to be it, this could turn into the final push and there it is so now for people that don't know in push once you reach that objective your spawns are now moved up closer to the enemy's uh, final zone so now with those closer zones you get faster respawns you're able to jump back in this fight and we're gonna see Valpo's gonna be aggressive with it because the longer that they can spend in this advanced spawn the more time they can spend getting back and there's a pick as well but um Looks like the Zarya ult is going to try and counter this Genji, keep him in that ball there. And it's going to stop him effectively as the Lucio ult also comes out as well. Um, I mean, they're going to be forced to push off this point a little bit. Just like with the damage and health that they're taking. Winston going in being a little bit of a bully on this Dirty Wolf here, getting that pick there. Um, damage just being too much. Zarya may also go down here as well, getting chased down. Yeah, um, I, I was expecting this, honestly. Um... As soon as I saw them, they were all rushing in and they were really grouped up together. And I think they were working really well as a team. I just saw what was happening. I was like, this is probably going to be a team wipe for Valpo. And honestly, they're probably going to make it to the team spawn that is a lot closer to them as well. Mm -hmm. Their side as well. Yep. So. And here, like you said, here's coming up the advanced point. Um, Sombra just stopping it a little bit. Maybe giving the team a chance. They don't want that. They don't want that advance. And Wispo gets the pick. And there's a double kill on Wispo. And they stop it like a meter away from the advanced spawn they're not going to get it um really really clutch coming from valpo there and they're not going to get that space that was honestly that it's, was so close that huge contest there from sombra was just enough for their team to just full sprint ahead and get those picks i mean we saw like i said it only takes one to push this payload but that can also work against when you have a backliner like sombra on your team um, they were pushing that one, they were using that advanced, like, aggressiveness that I'm looking for, and it looks like there's an instant Kiriko ult, and, uh, what's it called, a Kiriko ult, and a Winston Divin coming in there, the pick going on Ana for the Genji, but Fan Beauty trading back with another DPS kill, uh, EMP is up right now, and there it is, looking for a kill, and that did hack with the other Lucia ult, a nice combo there, giving themselves a health and damage advantage. The hack on the Winston looks like they're gonna farm a little bit of old charge here, just to make sure. But um, another hack, and that's gonna kill the Winston. Yeah, you're definitely seeing a terrible spot for Bradley right now. They're they are probably struggling. Um, might need to do some more work on push after this. Honestly, push is so new. Honestly, I don't even blame them if they are struggling and haven't really figured out the uses because it is so new. And I think what's rewarding to Valpo right now is how aggressive they are playing. Granted, it did just like backfire there with the pick on Sombra by that Winston. Winston being able to sit in their back line. Dirty Wolf may be able to go down here. But the ult from Wistful, and we may see an ult from Sojin here as well. Lucio popping ult as well, but um, Sojin just trying to get some shots off. Get a lot of damage out, and there's the Genji ult coming in uh, pretty yep. big for um, pretty big for Brad. That is three kills on us. Even though they were able to take out the Lucio, we are down to basically like one last player. They're going to get, they're going to try really hard to get that last movement area. Because, you know, if they don't, if they get that area, they are at a much better advantage versus, because they are very far behind. So they really need to keep the point, really focus on killing Valpo at this rate. A little bit of a dive back. I mean, we're used to seeing this Winston being able to take that back line. Um, speed weed is popping off with the Genji this game. He is getting a couple of kills, kills especially on that auto in the back line. Um, Isak on the Lucio playing pretty aggressively here, but the ult from Kiriko able to push this Winston up and do a lot of damage. Um, it is overtime now though, so remember we are looking at a 50, uh, 50 meter lead here. And overtime does not stop. There are no time refreshes in push. This is it. They have to sit on this point or else that is game. So you're going to see they're going to group up hard here right now. Um, with the ult from uh, EMP here, he's probably going to look for a translocation over top just to try and hit it. He is not trying to get sighted right now, however. And here it comes. And there's a huge EMP, a five-man EMP coming in. And that's a push, a three kill. Chiraro on the Ana popping four off, Wistful kills. getting four kills. The dive back to stop from the knockoff. And all it is is just a Winston 
ulted on point, and that's going to be it. And it looks like game is going to go to Valpo Esports, and that's going to be the series. Valpo Esports coming out with a 3-1 win over uh, Bradley. Yeah, and really, really good. You can hear them cheering in the background. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> and I think this is that last EMP that we were looking at. Oh, no. This was one of the earlier EMPs. Um, I mean, you can see basic somber tech being able to throw up, get hit. Um, the higher that you hit, the more area that Sombra's ult continues with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's huge for how Fan Beauty was playing in these kind of matchups. Yeah. But um, overall, great series, I think, from Valpo Esports. Uh, great start over with the first game win. A little mm -hmm. bit of a rocky change with that second fight that they had. Yeah. They really just started getting counterpicked, right? Mm -hmm. But then going into game two, three, and four, um, these kind of games that they had where they were confident in their picks. Um, if I had to pick, like, a key impact player right there, I mean, Wistful, obviously, you're always going to be impactful in the tank, <laughs> but I think we have to give a shout-out to Fusik mm -hmm. um, yeah. on that support. I mean, that Zenyatta was going insane, and then you saw in the Lucio getting aggressive, being able to punch. Um, but overall, great great match. Any final words that you may have? Um, yeah, honestly, good job on that music. I've never really seen a Zenyatta do so much <laughs> damage, so many kills in like one. Honestly, I'm surprised he never got play of the game sometimes. Yeah. I mean, he, wa he was popping off and he was able to hold his own and that definitely set up his team. Yeah, but, definitely. Um, overall, like two great series. Uh, Valpo one and one on the day yeah. for Valpo Shield. Mm -hmm. And we really don't have much more in the booth to talk about um nope. <laughs> great day overall got to see some improvement uh really great matches so yeah, definitely. i mean uh this has been your host daikembe i'm here with aubrey also known as era j and we've had a great stream uh make yep. sure to go follow the socials thank you for all your support thank you for coming and watching out all the follows all the chats <laughs> uh go valpo i'll yep. see y'all peace